What's up guys, what's up, what's up? How's the audio now? I changed some stuff, let me know if it's still bad. Still choppy? This is so weird. about now. Is this too bad? Yeah, the funny thing is I just recorded some stuff and it sounded good. Yeah, exactly. I didn't change anything. What's up, Robin? H how is the mic now? Is it still bad? Actually, I have another mic. Let me just grab a different mic. Let's see if that helps. Okay, so how about now? It's a different mic. You guys let me know if this is better. Is it good now? Please tell me yes. Low volume, okay. How about now? Is it better now? Well, hopefully it's better because bit better oh man all right so this is probably better now right but i i can have i cannot have my microphone on my all right let me just okay yeah thanks for helping me out setting this up
How about now? Is it better now? Yeah, I actually have a. Yeah. Eu tenho um lapela, mas e agora? Tá melhor? Tá tudo no máximo. <laughs> yeah, I basically maxed out all of the settings, uh, so hopefully this is better. Otherwise, not sure if there's much I can do. How about now? Yeah, like literally everything is on max now. Okay, cool. Já aumentei, tá no tá no máximo no OBS também. Uh, uh, okay, that's good to know. Yeah, everything is basically uh, maxed out. Let me just post the the new link. Because uh, uh, I share the old link with some folks, so you know, I uh, want to make sure people are. And we're gonna do some uh, sketching and you know, like talk about some stuff. Um, probably gonna do something very simple because I still want to figure out the whole YouTube thing. So. só fazer a última postagem aqui e Yeah, s sorry about the delay, but <laughs> this is totally impromptu. Uh, this is basically like a test run. I just want to make sure I understand how the whole YouTube thing works. And, you know, as you guys can see, I'm, I'm not a professional streamer uh, by any means. Um, but yeah, bear with me. We're going to get some, we're going to do some, some, some cool stuff together. All right. So, uh, dude, the whole one wheel thing. <laughs> It's a funny story. I actually sold that thing already. Uh, <laughs> if you guys don't know what a one wheel is, just just Google it. One wheel. It's like a tiny skateboard, uh, and and obviously it just has one wheel. So I bought one. I was like crazy excited about it because it does feel like snowboarding. Uh, but then what happened was I ate it. Right. So I was like. I was riding at probably like 20 miles per hour, which you're not supposed to do. You, you're not supposed to pass 18, but basically there's no way to, to know, right? So you, you're going and, you know, like if you like riding fast, you just keep going fast and fast. Um, and, and, you know, so, yeah, I kept going super fast and then suddenly I just uh, I just ate it. So, yeah, I crashed pretty bad, like... Um, yeah, my whole, my, my both arms, my hand, my feet, my everything. So I was like, yeah, you know what? Let me just stick to skateboarding and, um, and you know, like riding my bike and some other stuff. But uh, all right, so what, what I'm going to do today is just a quick basic head. Uh, so what, what, I, what I started saying on, on a past stream where my audio was pretty bad is I usually start with a sphere, right? So I just grab like a basic sphere. And then on the side, so if you go on uh, geometry or deformation, 
and you go to the size and I reduce the size by minus 100 and this is basically just to have a better relationship with the brush the, with the brush sizes um, this is just a personal thing I, I just like doing it this way uh, but it, it, it's not really relevant but anyways I just wanted to share so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna spend some time on this very basic shapes so I dynamesh uh, this sphere so basically now I can move things around and keep dynamashing uh, but the point that I wanted to make is that I know some people they like to sculpt uh, for example they just place the nose whatever uh, they place the ear here and they like keep moving things around until it looks correct and and by no by no means I want to say this is wrong or not and it's just like a different type of approach right uh, the way I like sculpting especially when I'm when I'm studying is really trying to get the most out of the session and to me analyzing the, the big forms and the big shapes and the big structures and trying to capture the silhouette the forms the shapes first and then placing the features secondly it's very important for me and again uh, you can model however you want right so there's like no rules or anything like that but i like to think that if i'm sculpting if i'm drawing if i'm painting i i want it to kind of sort of feel like just one thing so this is I, I ended up putting a couple like rules when I'm sculpting, when I'm drawing, when I'm painting, so they all they all kind of feel uh, similar enough, right? So this is what I'm saying. Like you, you don't start drawing and then you like put a, a mouth and then you move it because if you're drawing on paper, you cannot move unless you erase and you draw it again. So that's the same approach that I'm trying to do here. Or if you're sculpting in clay, of course you can move things around here and there, but you're not gonna be able to do like major big shifts or big changes, right? So. Uh, that's that's the kind of approach that I have. So we're gonna start with a uh, very basic shape. Uh, in terms of the perspective, I like to keep it uh, kind of on a big lens size. So usually 85 or even with the perspective completely turned off, uh, autographic, if you will. So I have a couple references on my second monitor here. I'm gonna just do like a basic head. Um, I have like, I, I usually buy a bunch of uh, reference packs from like different people, different artists, like different models. Uh, and I have like this pretty uh, good looking guy here that I'm gonna just try to capture the essence. It's not gonna be like a portrait or likeness or anything like that. It's just gonna be uh, mainly trying to focus on, you know, like sharing a little bit and talking to you guys. Um, are you using, all right, so I'm gonna also try to answer some questions along the way. So, you know, like if you have any questions or about anything just let me know uh drop some 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 comments in there yeah i know like the whole microphone thing i'm sorry guys uh i had a hard time uh with the mic um for some reason it's it's streaming very low but just bear with me if you can tur turn on the volumes on your side a little bit i'm gonna try to fix it for the next for the next stream but yeah uh sorry about that but it is what it is um we spent maybe like 30 minutes just trying to figure this out. So, all right, so let's just get things going. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, you know, pull out a little bit of the neck here. So, you know, you have like something to really anchor the head onto. So I'm gonna try to keep it simple and, and push it down on an angle. I'm gonna also, I have a lot of hot keys as well. So uh, if you guys see me like moving from like brush, one brush to another brush, it's just because I'm, uh, you know, like I have like a bunch of hot keys. So I'll be able to move from the clay, from the move, from the uh, standard, uh, like in just a split of a second. But so you're not gonna see me uh, clicking too much i just like working with the hotkeys it makes the whole thing a little bit more fluid uh, and flow nice so as you can see like this is very simple uh again really trying to find uh the, the big forms the big shapes i'm gonna try to extend a little bit more for the uh, pit of the neck here and then i'm gonna try to increase a little bit to the side so kind of bringing the trapezius out a little bit as well uh, and 
try to keep it very simple. So I'm, like at this point, I'm gonna start looking at my references and see if I can actually uh, capture the reference a little bit more. So, you know, like each head has its own particularities and individualities. So, and the, the first thing I'm gonna, I'm looking at here is what is the big form from the head? Like, you know, some people have like very oval shape heads. Uh, some people have very square heads or rectangular, if you will. Um, so, you know, like this guy has, a, it's more like a, a neutral, I would say, uh, in a sense that it's very wide on the top and it comes down to on a very like oval, uh, the classic egg uh, formation. Uh, you know, I'm gonna try to start indicate some stuff here. This is still keeping things very loose. Uh, as again, if you were drawing or sculpting in clay, you don't wanna commit too soon so this is mainly try me trying to say like hey what if the jaw was here does it look good does it look bad right so with like very simple strokes and simple uh, forms we're gonna try to put down a little bit more information so we can actually compare uh, and this is like a, a team that you're gonna see across all over the, all over the place this is basically how I sculpt how I draw uh, you kind of indicate something a little bit here and then the more information you have on, on a paper, on a, on a computer, on a surface, whatever, uh, the more accurate decisions you can make because you have more points to, to compare. Although, again, I don't want to add too much because then it becomes like a moving, uh, yeah, a moving show, which I particularly don't, uh, don't think it's very beneficial for the way I like to work. Um, all right, so it's just, uh, you know, super simple, nothing crazy going on here. Um, and again, I'm still trying to figure out the, the proper forms and, and, you know, you may look at your references and see like, ah, oh, I don't even know if this is close enough or not, but with time you, you're going to be able to, to start to, to fill it a little bit better. Uh, you know, you, you can squint, and I know that my guy has a little bit of a uh, tighter jaw. And I'm sculpting with symmetry here today, uh, but usually when I'm doing these uh, shape studies, uh, I like to kind of don't, don't have any symmetry, uh, just go with the flow. All right, this is kind of okay for now. Let's just save. And um, yeah, let's see if you guys have any questions. So let me just stop real quick. Uh, all right, all right. Hey, what's up, guys? Fala aí, galera. Uh, are you using Dino Top? Uh, I don't know what Dino Top is, but um, I'm using Dino Mesh, uh, if that's what you mean. All right, the volume thing. Can you show the ref for a moment? Um, the, the reason why I don't have the references here is because I bought this from a, an actual model and I'm not really sure if the license that I bought with really allows me to, to stream it. So I'm just trying to be very uh, respectful for the artist, right? So this is an actual person uh, he works as a model and I bought bought it right for my personal use. So yeah, I don't want to get into the, you know, like the, the legal issues or anything like that, or just, just more of a respectful thing as well. All right. I know I have a bunch of like, uh, questions in Portuguese and questions in English. I'm going to stick to the English for tonight. Uh, cause probably most of you speak English as well, but we can do a, another session in Portuguese at a later, a later, later time. Um, so anyways, I'm going to answer these questions in English. So how can I organize myself to study anatomy and not, and not kind of spend time just modeling random things without uh, growing or evolving too much? Uh, well, if you want to study anatomy, that, 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 that's it, right? So instead of just modeling, uh, random stuff you just go and study anatomy and by that you can see how i study anatomy personally i pick a team pick a piece of the body 
uh, this is one w one of the ways that I that I do right so you would for example you would study an arm right and then you really dissect the arm uh, you go as deep as you want as you feel comfortable uh, not deep on the on the actual depth of the muscles but deep on the the type of accuracy that you're trying to get out, out of that study right so if you never you never model an arm I would recommend just trying to model an arm as simple as you can just go for the very basic shape so you can look at Bridgman or you know like any of those very classical uh, sculptures as well they they use they tend to simplify these forms a lot and then you know try to make an arm and then try to later understand what the arm is made up from so out of so you can go to the bone structure first that's what i would recommend so you model the bones right and then you go to the very top surface uh big forms or the big muscles so you can look at the the volume of the biceps for example you can look at the volume of the uh the, the, the anterior forearm and the posterior forearm right so you can look at like these big muscles big volumes first and then instead of just trying to um look at the individual muscles especially when you go to the forearms to the legs and you know like things like that when you get like a lot of muscles uh just try to keep it simple to keep it simple and you know that's how i would do it so if you want to study anatomy just study anatomy just don't do anything else right uh but again anatomy is not the only thing you should be studying you should be studying more i hope i hope that helps uh and you know like it goes back to the goals right if you have a goal of doing X, just go and try to establish your workflow or your pipeline or your study routine in order to achieve X. All right, so uh, how do I, uh, how did I learn English? So the whole English thing, well, I grew up listening to punk rock, right? And I grew up listening to uh, a lot of like, American bands and, and English speaking bands songs. So I used to uh, read the booklets and sing the lyrics, you know, and, and Google it or well, Google didn't exist at that time, but I, I used to go to the dictionary. And I also took a bunch of English course, a clock, English courses along along like throughout my life. But you know, like things only really got better when I moved here, which I moved six years ago. Uh, and I still struggle sometimes. Um, uh, yeah, sometimes like I'm, 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 I'm going on a, uh, I have like a trend of thought and then I think of something else and then I completely forgot the words and, you know, it's very embarrassing because I'm trying to say something and you're just like, uh, 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 you know, <laughs> but it's, it's just, just part of the process. Um, and, and, and by the way, my Portuguese is not that good as well. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, guys, let's just go back to this, this thing. And I'll be back to, to the, hey, Abraão. Hey, good to see you here, buddy. Hey, what's up, André? Nice. Yeah, good to see you guys. Cool, cool. All right. Salve. All right, so let's just keep going. So at this point, what I like to do is just block out the ear. So uh, I'm gonna just put a little bit of mass here, uh, you know, uh, and using the move brush, I'm gonna try to establish the, the big forms of the ear. And, and you know, try to capture, uh, put that on an angle, move it down, move it back. And, you know, again, as we, we did with everything else, we're just gonna try to uh, have something in there so we can compare we can use as a measurement tool or we can use as a, a comparison tool uh, and the jaw I think should be a little bit lower as well but you can see that this is starting to feel like a head right uh, maybe a little bit more mass here uh, and you can see that I move very slow but it doesn't mean that the whole process is gonna take a lot a lot of time right um, and th this is something that it's actually funny like the more i study and the more i sculpt um, one of my personal goals is to be able to really move slower and and what i want to do by moving slower is moving a little bit 
be becoming a little bit more conscious of what I'm doing. So I used to scope like this, right? I would do this and I'd do like, uh, like, you know, like, I don't know what I'm doing. And then, and, you know, like, do you, my, like I have anxi anxiety. So my, the, the way my head process things is like super fast. And I actually think about like a billion things at the same time. So uh, when I'm sculpting, I used to like, all right, I want to do the eyes because I want to do the ears, blah, 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 you know, like it's like a huge, uh, uh, it's it's like a very like fast process but w my goal with trying to slow down is to actually become a little bit more aware and conscious of what i'm doing so you know like i'm trying to really look at this shape all right i think i need a little bit of more more mass here so you go there and you put a little bit more mass uh and then you come here to the trapezius or maybe like this form it, it, it doesn't it doesn't sound very good right so you're just gonna go here and, and fix it uh, maybe I should dynamash this a little one more time. Uh, and you know, it just kind of moved slow. And because I'm moving slow, it doesn't mean that I'm taking forever to, to make it, right? So now if I compare to the, I don't even have the, the bridge of the nose or, or the forehead landmarks yet, but I can already see that I'm missing a little bit of like form here. Uh, and you know, keep moving. All right. So, all right, and guys, if you, uh, if you guys have any questions, just throw in there. Hey, hey, what's up, JF? Yeah, good to see you here, buddy. All right, so let's just keep going. So what I'm gonna do now is try to put a, a couple like landmarks, right? So I'm gonna go to the eyes and uh, start like blocking out the cavity of the whole eye socket in here. And again, trying to use, if you draw, I'm gonna try to like, in my head, I'm like dividing this by the, the three uh, thirds, right? So you have like one, two, three, uh, and then you have a little bit for the hair. Uh, I'm not gonna be like drawing or doing anything like that here, but you get the idea. And then if you look from the side, you have a recession here. So the whole uh, zygomatic arch, which is this guy here, that goes, it goes back. But again, this is not an anatomy uh, tutorial or anything like that. So I'm just gonna focus on the principles and the main forms. So what I'm trying to do here now is uh, just establish the, the main the main forms, right? Keeping it simple, keeping it like going very slow. Um, and we're gonna now uh, block out the nose. So I need a little bit of mass. So if you go to the side, uh, let me just kind of compare to my references here. Uh, I think we need a little bit more mass here. And we're gonna uh, try to move out the nose. So we have the nose here. Uh, again, keep things simple. And I'm gonna keep repeating myself as I usually, as I always do. Uh, but it's, it's mainly because I'm really trying to focus on the important things. So. I'm not really concerned about the actual shape of the nose too much. I'm just kind of concerned with the big forms, right? We're going to try to establish uh, the big forms, the big shapes. Uh, all right. So capturing the essence of this guy here, we're going to uh, see if the nose is a little bit too big, which I think is. So let's just go back. And now I can see that my the shape of the cranium here, it's a little bit too wide. So this guy should have an even bigger jaw. And this is looking a little bit better. So let's keep going. And I'm going to increase the resolution of the Dynamesh here a little bit. Uh, we're going to go with, uh, all right, keep it simple, keep it clean I'm gonna block out again as, as if I'm, I was drawing uh, just put like a quick landmark here for the mouth and now work on the chin a little bit so it should be here
let's see we should be a little bit deeper if we go to the three quarter uh, we can actually work with the shape of the nose a little bit the mouth should be a little bit higher um, and a little bit more chin bring this guy down a little bit more yeah something like that and I can see that I'm moving like very slow um, but again this is just a, it's not a likeness, this is just a, a very simple head. I just wanted to, uh, you know, like model something, try the YouTube thing, uh, and get to share a little bit of my thinking process that goes behind sculpting something like that. Uh, but of course I do have some references here. So I'm not, although I'm using this guy uh, as a reference, I'm not really gonna try to really capture the likeness or do like a very accurate portrait. I'm not interested in that today. Uh, let's just work a little bit on the nose now. Um, and this guy's nose is pretty interesting. Um, so we have the ball of the nose and then you have the nostrils here. And something like this and again let's keep moving slow yeah something like this this is better think we should keep going mouth is a little bit too wide so I'm gonna just cut it a little bit let's go a little bit more shape here at this angle here of his chin it's a little bit flatter here so we should actually bring this back just a notch and you have the sternocleidomastoid attaching here um, and this guy actually has a yeah you can actually feel this connecting here let's just go to the pit of the neck probably a little bit too low so I'm just gonna raise it a little bit so the whole likeness thing I actually have a, a lot to say to talk about it so I, I do think studying and trying to do portraits it's it's very important um, and it's definitely a great exercise it's it's like solving a big puzzle right uh, but I think you need to be careful um, because the problem with the likeness is if 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 it looks close, it, you kind of it kind of looks bad, you know, because uh, you do expect to see something like very uh, perfect, if you know what I mean. So I, I would only try to start doing likeness if if you can already model like very realistic heads, and by that I mean. Uh, maybe you look at one or two or maybe three different heads or even just one it doesn't matter and then you get it it doesn't have to be close but you you can make like a head a realistic head right so you can head you can model a head that looks like a person it doesn't look like a specific person but it looks like a person i think this is very important because uh, there's a lot in, that goes into modeling a head for example there's a lot of like planes and subtleties and um, and capturing the, the depths and there's a lot of stuff that you really need to study and 
and it can get a little bit overwhelming if you're trying to do all of that plus make a recognizable actor for example right which is like people usually tend to do uh, especially in the beginning so it's kind of up to you you can do whatever you want but i would recommend just just do it once you are able to uh, model or draw or paint like at least something that looks like a head right like a realistic head um, but so it's, it's very simple right so if you cannot make a head uh, it's going to be very hard to make uh, a very specific head You know, keep things very simple. I'm still working on the big shape, big proportions. Uh, I think this guy's nose is a little bit lower. Uh, and once we have more stuff, we're gonna be able to compare more. Uh, and there's no problem in fixing your mistakes. I mean, if you see something that looks wrong, go ahead and fix it. Don't, don't wait because it will, <laughs> it, it won't. Uh, fix it by itself so if you spot something wrong just go and just go ahead and fix it right so that's the th that's the whole thing about modeling drawing and sculpting and if there's a mistake you need to fix it there are a couple occasions that you can let it go but uh, especially in the beginning if you see something off just just fix it all right, so it's time to blocking the eyes. And the eyes, there are multiple ways of doing it. Uh, what I'm gonna do right now, it's a little bit more, uh, uh, very simple representation of, of, of an eye. Uh, because I'm really trying to just capture the, the essence of this guy, right? So I'm not really interested in making like a very realistic uh, head or like very film quality looking polished head CG head so th that's not the goal for today but even if I'm doing that I actually almost start the same way uh, you're gonna gonna see why I'm gonna the way I did the mouth I just put like a couple like very simple landmarks I'm gonna do the same thing for the eyes uh, I'm gonna make this guy not looking like this and then right now I have a little bit more information so I can actually start comparing um, and you can see if the size of the eye is correct maybe this can be a little bit lower here We can actually increase the resolution a little bit more so we have a little bit more triangles to work with and this is a little bit too deep so let's just start filling it in clean up these forms a little bit more they are a little bit too um, too wobbly uh, I like to work with very clean uh, shapes so we're gonna spend a little bit more time just cleaning kind of solidifying some of like these planes and for this I recommend doing like plane of the head studies and uh, those kind of exercises so you can really understand and identify uh, those forms and let's just work a little bit on the mouth so this guy kind of has a drawing of the lips like this uh, and then this kind of goes back here and 
just just watch out especially when doing like uh, the lips uh, just watch out for sharp edges uh, you rarely find sharp edges on on lips uh, there is a lot of contrast between the colors and between the forms but if you look at a skin or even at a uh, a cast of a of a human head or even if you just like you know like put your fingers uh, above your lips uh, you're not gonna see or feel like a very sharp edge but you can still indicate some of those volumes to work from the profile and once we start adding like secondary forms and secondary shapes this is really when the whole thing starts coming to life but I'm gonna hold on on, on adding those uh, I like to add those at a later state so uh, just kind of refining some of these big masses here uh, you know like this was a little bit too round so we're gonna uh, fix uh, work a little bit more on the neck the neck is a little bit too flat uh, let's just bring this forward a little bit more The whole neck is actually a little bit too thin now that we move this guy. Uh, this is actually the yeah, so it does like this sh this form here. This this is actually goes forward a little bit more here. If you guys are sculpting along, uh, let me know too, because that, that would be actually very interesting to hear. Uh, yeah, let's clean it up a little bit. It's a little bit too stylized still, but that's fine. Uh, we're going to keep refining some of these forms. Uh, and let's just move this ear up a little bit. We can actually fix the whole cranium mass a little bit more. change the nose a little bit so the nose is more like this from this angle so this jaw is actually a little bit tiny
I think it's time to uh, yeah like like I was saying like once I kind of hone in in some of these forms they will look more natural and they'll look uh, more believable and juicy and you know like as everybody likes to see like those soft transitions the secondary forms and everything but I really like to spend uh, most of my time here because this is what uh, really helps me uh, in the long run all right so I think this is this is good for now let me just save real quick uh, you can see the ears are kept very loose um, the, the whole mass is, is here already so I don't need to really kind of refine the ears a little bit too much but what I want to do now is actually start refining some of these forms so let's just make this a little bit darker yeah that's better it's a little bit like easier to see uh, yeah and let's just keep sculpting so I think it's time to block out the hair as well so for the hair um, I'm just gonna go sculpt something very uh, simple so let's see this guy has like somewhat like kind of long hair so I'm just gonna sculpt on the same geometry here this uh, so it goes here and then kind of it's stuck in behind the ears and then you can see like like a bun here so now I kind of have like the the flow of the hair so I know that this is kind of flowing this way and you know let's make sure this is still kind of following the, the structure and you know this is going to do the same thing it's going to flow behind the ear and then we can actually do something like this right so it kind of comes in here yeah just for the sake of the demo uh, whatever and you know like something else like adding a symmetry like the hair for example really starts to make the thing a little bit uh, more alive um, uh, and let's just do this the hair is very important I mean like unless you guys are bald like myself uh, you have like very short hair usually the hair like really contributes to the overall shape and to how we perceive the forms of the head right and like you are who you are because of all of these things combined so if I'm trying to uh, model a specific person or in this case uh, kind of similar enough uh, the hair plays a huge role on that so okay not bad um, still not great so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna add like some flyovers here uh, and like all I'm, I'm using it's very simple tools uh, I've been using uh, standard brush uh, clay tubes uh, and actually let's just make this a little bit bigger yeah a little bit fuller make this part a little bit flatter then here we can actually do the same thing I bring this down a little bit more so it feels like a little bit more organic uh, yeah something like that and then later on we can uh, break it up uh, even more if we want to think this is this is good for now uh, but you know as you can see we have a little bit more information to work with right so all right so let, I think it's time to answer some questions <laughs> I totally forgot about it my bad guys uh, again I'm not very used to the whole streaming thing but I promise I'll get better at it so anyway so all right let's go back let me see how 
how people treated you when you started in big studios? Well, honestly, all very good. I mean, even when I was back in Brazil, like all of my jobs, I have always had really good relationships with my peers. Um, I think if you if you respect people, they will respect you back. That's how I like to think about it. So if you're just starting out and you are afraid of, you know, like joining a big studio and feeling the pressure and all of that, uh, just remember that everybody started uh, one day, right? So yeah, I, I'd say like, don't worry about it. Just be yourself and be respectful, mindful of the people around you and, you know, be nice. Uh, all right, so uh, cool, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Do you think that people sometimes get too addicted to Dynamesh and forgot that Remesh is there too? Uh, yeah, I mean, totally. I actually use Dynamesh very little. Um, so at this point, I'm gonna probably refine the, the eyes a little bit. And in this case, this is just like a very simple sketch. So I'm gonna probably not gonna do anything, but I, I prefer to work with a real topology and real subdivisions. So uh, maybe it's because when I started, there was no such a thing as Dynamesh. So I kind of got used to the work of the, the, wor the work, the polygons get subdivided. Um, and, and, and the brush flow is a little bit different from in the, on the Dynamesh. Uh, uh, mesh so yeah i mean it, yeah i would say maybe <laughs> that, that's not a good answer but you get what i'm saying like sure i mean it really depends on what you're trying to do i think dynamesh is great but if you're trying to just work going up and down in the subdivisions it's much better to just uh, have a proper a flow topology so in order to get that you need to remesher or do a topology by hand which sometimes i still do um all right so hey robin thanks buddy uh i'm doing this one with my f <laughs> come on guys yeah i, w I work with these two so <laughs> good to see you guys here uh <laughs> oh my god all right so how would you incorporate your personal style when doing realistic work oh uh, that's a tricky one like me personally uh, I kind of lean towards a little bit more on the realistic stuff, even for my personal work. Although I like working with creatures, right? If you look at my portfolio, there's a lot of like kind of stylized creatures, if you will. Um, I don't know, but I never really thought about it too much, honestly. I think the thing that I really love is just making believable stuff. Uh, and that could be stylized, that could be realistic, but I just want to... I want to convey emotion and I want to convey uh, groundness, if you will, right? So it's basically for me, it's just making things that could exist. Uh, maybe not a stylized world, whatever, but it, it, like that, that's my ultimate goal, just making things that could exist. So you, 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 you feel that they, are, they have sentiments or feelings or whatever, right? Everyone do the years only when they have to. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, actually, the ears is something very interesting. Uh, I actually look at people's models ears a lot uh, because they really tell a lot of how people, if people pay a lot of attention to them. Uh, and although I'm kind of, I haven't worked too much on my yet, uh, I will eventually. So make sure your guys are modeling good ears. This is one of my pet peeves, <laughs> you know, like making like, modeling like shitty ears and uh, just doing like circles and stuff like that and another one that i've been learning like recently it's it's very important it's the clavicles this is something that a lot of people uh don't pay too much attention as well but the clavicle especially on a head like this is what really grounds uh, the whole head this is like the whole scaffolding of the head and the neck uh, so it's something that you can kind of hold on to. Um, so yeah, I believe I believe I, I heard Elia uh, uh, talking about this, but yeah, I don't know. I I mean I've, I've been reading a lot of uh, 
books and studying a lot of like the Russian Academy stuff. So I'm pretty sure this is this is this this these thoughts are coming from the Russian uh, Academy. All right, this is something. Uh, this is kind of looking okay for now. Uh, super simple. We're gonna start refining things in a little bit. All right, so. Uh, am I making my own brushes? No, like this is, I'm just using the move brush, very standard brushes. So I'm using the move, uh, the clay buildup, the standard and the dam standard. I think that, I believe that's all I use so far. Uh, I've, 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 I've done brushes in the past, but I actually don't use them anymore. I kind of prefer the standard stuff. Um, yeah, totally. The trapez is a definitely a big one, Mariana. Uh, hey, thanks, guys. Could you recommend some books about art that helped you as an artist? Yeah, let, let me actually think about that because, um, of course, all of the movie books and, you know, like art, art books, they, they all influence me a bunch, right? Um, but, but let me think about it because... I think maybe the most influential books for me so far have nothing to do with art. They are more on related to mindset and uh, kind of conquering your goals and, and that kind of stuff, like the mentality and then and, you know, like how do you how do you study and how do you approach learning something that you you never done before, that sort of thing. I think those are the books that really inspired me. Uh, kind of helped me a lot uh, but of course all of the art books all of the masters and I have a bunch of books right uh, sadly when I moved from Brazil I had to I, c I couldn't bring all of the books I had a uh, probably like 400 books uh, at home in Brazil so when I moved to the US I sold most of them and I only brought maybe um, like 50 or something so I'm like slowly rebuilding my library now All right, so let's just kind of, what I like to do with the eyes is just zone in on the eyes a little bit. So I'm just gonna isolate the eyes so I don't have any auto distractions. And you can insert a sphere here. You can do whatever you want, but for today, I'm just gonna keep it simple. So I'm just gonna try to uh, really capture some of like these big shapes uh, as if I was kind of drawing. Let's see, let's just make this guy kind of down here. What I like about sculpting eyes like this, instead of just like throwing a sphere, it that really help, really allows me to blend uh, everything that I'm doing. So you you can you can find a sphere later. Uh, I just I just I just like the difficulty I guess of something like this, um, but it also feels a little bit more like a skin. <laughs> if you guys have ever worked with skins before, uh, you can feel that everything's kind of blended, it's kind of melting together. Uh, I I kind of like that look. I think that it's kind of static pleasing. So. Yeah. So let's just kind of forward a little bit kind of maybe make a crevices here uh, maybe this guy should be a little bit lower so we have the the famous glabella here uh, the keystone shape right um, and this guy actually has a very subtle planar change here on his globella. So let's just bring this forward a little bit.
have a little bit more clay here and there we can actually start refining some of these forms and for that i like looking at different angles so for example like i'm like focused on here on the eyes but i already saw like some issues here uh, so you know i want to make sure like this is properly connected and you know like that little breakup shape in there okay And you, you, you know the whole mouth area still needs a lot of work but we're gonna go little by little let's just go let's just focus on the eyes a little bit more uh, i think this should be a little bit deeper on this corner here and this guy should go uh, top so we have like a kind of a change of plane here Keeping things very simple still. Uh, trying to make this a little bit more uh, organic. The eyes might be a little bit on the small side, but that's fine. We're going to fix it later. Uh, Alright, so let's just kind of work on the bridge of the nose a little bit here. I'll break the symmetry later on. And how about working a little bit on the mouth? Let's see if I'm getting the profile correct here. You know, maybe this should go a little bit deeper. So we actually capture like the, the three quarter. change of planes here. All right, cool. All right, so let's just work on the mouth a little bit more. Let's see. this then it kind of goes flat then we do this Just work on these forms a little bit more. It's a little bit too inflated. Uh, we're gonna remember that there's a, a volume here. We're gonna work on this part later. Let's just go to the lower lip. I need more topology to work on the lips, but that's, that's okay for now. 
I just keep working on, you know, like the big W shape that we have here. Um, try to find these guys here. Not too over, overly exaggerated. Try to keep it somewhat natural. to this side here. Yeah, you know, it's, it's coming along. Keeping it simple. Uh, I think it's time to refine a little bit more of the zygomatic arch and work a little bit more uh, on these two shapes here. So you have the zygomatic, uh, then you have the muscles pulling on this side. So this is the part, th this is the point where I'm going to start to uh, use a little bit more of my analogy, my, my anatomy uh, studies, right? I already have a, a big structure, uh, like a big form established. So at this point, I can actually construct the anatomy based on the, the, the forms that I have instead of like purely relying on anatomy. And this is something that I've been uh, slowly changing my process. Like back in the day, I used to rely on anatomy for everything. Uh, basically, anatomy was the, the like where, sorry, sometimes it's, it's this is getting a little bit philosophical, so it's a little bit hard to concentrate. But what I'm trying to say is that in the past, I used to only rely on anatomy to navigate through the forms. So if I saw something uh, that I didn't know what's going on and I was trying to, even if it was just primary forms, I would say like, hey, what's the anatomy? What's the reason for that shape? What, what is the reason for that form? Which is good. Uh, but what I'm, what I'm, and I will still do it, right? But what I'm doing right now is let's just capture the essence of this guy. Let's capture the forms, the shapes, the, the attitude and the flow, the lines and without worrying too much about anatomy. And then once everything is established and it's in place. So for example, if you have a guy that the forehead is like this, or like, you know, like some people have, uh, forms like very squarish foreheads and, you know, like. Uh, you know, like very, very different, different shapes for the shape for the head. Instead of like building the cranium like that, I would probably just kind of find this big silhouette first and then find the anatomy uh, on it. it. It's it's very philosophical. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 if you don't really understand what I'm trying to do with like this changing behavior and process, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but hopefully if you guys are interested, I can make some videos, uh, ju just about that, just about this change in process. And this is mainly coming from all of the drawing and, uh, painting studies that I've been doing lately. Uh, actually this whole year I devoted to, uh, just painting and drawing, uh, and it, it's been fabulous. It's been like mind blowing, uh, experience. I felt like I've gained so much knowledge. Uh, I discovered so much stuff, things that I didn't even know exist, uh, ways of analyzing forms and way of identifying forms that ev every day, like I remember t telling my wife, I was like, what is going on? Like, how, how come I never pay attention to these things? Uh, how I was even modeling without knowing all of these things, right? Or without looking at these things. And reality is that um, I was looking at different things, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that, that's one of the reasons, like, the more you study, like, different art stuff, uh, the, the better you get. It's because you, overall, you, uh, you learn to see better. Yeah, I hope I hope all of these talking makes sense. Uh, you guys, let me know if you guys are enjoying this. 
at all or no um, but otherwise I'll stop <laughs> just just let me know uh, I, I like to talk especially about these things um, but uh, yeah th this is coming together I mean it's been a, an hour and something I believe uh, yeah an hour so yeah not bad um, still moving slow not rushing trying to to take my time uh, and you know we're gonna soon start breaking these sh these forms and these shapes even further so that's when uh, the, the real stuff starts to happen so you see like when you start adding like little forms like here there uh, when we go into the eyes the nose and uh, that's when the magic starts to happen and especially when you break the symmetry as well but I, I want to make sure I have a solid structure to to work with now let's just block out the ears a little bit as well uh, all right let me, okay i guess it's time for some questions sorry folks uh completely forgot again uh, you guys need to remind me although uh, i'm not sure how you would be able to remind me if i'm not paying attention but maybe i'll set up a timer or something um <laughs> all right yeah you guys i got too excited I, I don't like Ctrl Z a lot too, but sometimes I do it. Uh, and yeah, whatever. All right, this is this is good. So let's just uh, answer some questions. Um. All right. Uh. uh I'm kind of lost. Sorry. So okay. Do you know about how to sell or market sculptures and what different does work made for traditional versus 3D printed? So this is a very tricky question, man. Um, I don't have a lot of experience selling sculptures and other than just, you know, like going to Monster Palooza or posting stuff online and, and having people buying directly from me. So th th this is very hard for me to answer. I, I don't think I can give you like a proper answer. Like all of the stuff that I've done in the past was either commission or things that I made for myself and I just sold it right so um and I and I've sold traditional pieces and also sold 3d printed I don't think it makes a huge difference at least for for my own personal taste uh are you doing traditional sculpture as well yeah so I actually I've done a lot right but I think the last one I did was al almost a year ago. That makes me feel lazy. Uh, but like I was saying, <clears throat> I decided to devote my, my personal time this year to um, painting and drawing. Uh, but yeah, I'll definitely get back to it. I have, a, I have a huge passion for making things with my hands and clay sculpture, uh, clay sculpting, it's one of them. Uh, it's just being, it's just one of those things that you cannot do everything at once but although i'm super excited for the pumpkin season because you know we're gonna be carving some pumpkins pretty soon so yeah hopefully I'll, I'll be able to record some of that and post it here all right how do you pick themes to your personal work um well i think there are two ways of doing that one is based on things that i want to study or things that i want to develop further so maybe i'll pick I'll analyze my own work and decide. So, for example, if I want to study uh, hair or whatever, right? Uh, I'll pick something that has a lot of hair, uh, you know. So that's one way of picking the themes. And the other way is just uh, doing whatever I feel like doing. So, for example, right now I'm I'm working on a, 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 like a more stylized female character that i'm kind of developing uh, with a bunch of accessories hard surface stuff so it, there's a little bit of like the the first uh answer as well uh, i want to study a little bit more hard surface i want to study a little bit more stylized stuff as well um you know but uh, yeah i guess hopefully that answers your question All right, so you mentioned that you like to work with real topology. 
doesn't mean base mesh or just shaping with zero mesh as you go. Yeah, I, I guess it's more uh, sh shaping with zero mesh or, or even starting with a proper topology. That definitely helps. Um, all right, so I think I know what you mean. We'd we'll love to see some videos on that for sure. Yeah, okay. So I'll probably record some stuff. Let me just develop these uh, mindset a little bit further on, on the 3D sculpting at least. What's up? What's up, guys? Yeah, I guess that's true too, Mariana. Uh, most of the time, I tend to search for a meaning in everything. Like I said, I used to rely on anatomy. I tend to think about right or wrong and forget that things may be simpler. Just enjoy. I do think the... Yeah, don't get me wrong. I think trying to understand what you're looking at, it's very important. Um, what, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes if you're trying to create a cool design the design part might be more important than the actual anatomy so because you can make up the anatomy you can make things believable uh there, there's a very thin line <laughs> to to the things that i'm saying here so take everything with a grain of salt but if you're trying to make something flow um it, it may be very hard to make it flow uh, from the inside out so it might be easier to just look at the, the overall shapes and forms and then construct the anatomy later on. Um, hey, glad you guys are liking it. Appreciate it. Do you feel like you have access to the mind's eye instead of finding forms through what you see? Um, that, that, uh, yeah that's something that that i'm always trying to to remember that i need to to model and to kind of disconnect a little bit from my previous knowledge otherwise i kind of go back to the defaults that i've learned and i definitely think that painting and drawing has really helped me because uh, i've been working with construction approach where you construct but i also been working with the a picture plane, right? Basically, it doesn't matter what I'm drawing. I'm just drawing a bunch of shapes and connecting them together. And these type of exercises really helps you to um, detach from the subject that you're modeling, that you're drawing. And so I think doing a little bit of both really helps me. Hey, thanks, man. We, yeah, we are, we are very safe around here. Thanks for asking. Um, really sad times that we're living. Uh, this creates fires. Uh, I hope everybody's safe as well. And I know some people that had to evacuate, so um, it's pretty sad. I don't have much, much other to say, but we are safe for now. Why not make more anatomy studies live here? Yeah, I'll, I'll probably do some for sure. Uh, I mean, like, yeah, I get it. I get what you're saying, Juan. Yeah. Do you teach? Uh, yeah, I've taught a lot in the past. Uh, right now, I don't teach. Um, I may do mentorships in the future, but yeah, I'll keep you guys posted. But I don't have any any classes or anything like right now. I'm just very busy at work. And whenever I have a little bit of a spare time, I like to study and develop my own skills. So uh, at the moment, I don't have anything planned, but I do enjoy teaching a lot. And I like uh, mentoring as well. So I might be back to that soon. Regarding the head studies, do you study or used to study with 3D scans? Can you share any tips on how you did it? Do you draw on top of the scans to get the face plans? I think that's a pretty good uh, exercise, Andrea. Uh, personally, I've yeah like a couple of years ago maybe a lot of years ago i used to clean up a lot of scans for work so i used to work with with some companies and i would receive the scans and i would clean them up basically uh, removing uh, artifacts and re-sculpting forms and re-sculpting details and, and things like that so that process really helped me to uh, pay attention to the subtleties and to how things sometimes don't look as we the way we expect uh, nowadays uh, when I'm doing professional work I also work with a lot of scans so 
every time I have a scan on my hands, I try to use that as a uh, as an opportunity to learn and to identify those forms. So one a good exercise is uh, maybe just buy some scans or just use some photographs and try to mimic what you see. Uh, you're gonna start seeing that uh, maybe we we tend to emphasize things a little bit more than they are in reality, which sometimes can be a good thing, but uh, a good exercise is just to try to mimic some scans. Um, the same way we do master studies, right? We go to the museums and we copy uh, sculptures and whatnot. Try to do that with scans. I think it's, it's really helpful. Yeah, you do get the photos for sure. All right, let's just work a little bit on the ears. Uh, and I like isolating things a little bit so it's a little bit easier to concentrate. Um, all right, so this guy, and again, we're gonna start with, with very simple shapes. I'm not gonna like really teach you how to model an ear, but uh, I, I, I really like sculpting ears. So we have this connection here. making sure you guys are looking from the front and the profile. One thing that for me it's very tricky as well. I don't have any music playing. <laughs> this is kind of killing me. Uh, I don't do any work without any music. Uh, someone told me that streaming music would maybe put me in trouble, but I think, uh, as far as I understand, if I'm just streaming um, like YouTube free music or whatever, that that, that should be okay, right? Uh, you guys have any, any info on that? I just want to be able to like listen to something. Uh, the silence is just kind of killing me, and and honestly, listening to something usually puts me in the zone. So I kind of I've been doing this for a while, so it really helps me to concentrate. If you guys have any tips, any pro streamers out there, uh, just let me know. All right, kind of very basic shapes. So we're gonna start carving in things a little bit better here. simple so this is a good opportunity for us to just maybe move things a little bit if needs to be um, yeah, maybe this should be a little bit more here is good let's just bring this guy in a little bit here all right 
right so uh years are weird and wonderful yeah i i, I agree 100 percent. i really like modeling years and sculpting years uh, yeah free music's fine okay yeah i might my yeah I, I think i may need to find like uh if you guys have any links or something just let me know too but uh, i may need to yeah like the lo-fi stuff um without copyright that, that would be a good one only when people watch after the live the audio is blocked as i know oh that's good to know um yeah I'm, I'm still working from home uh i guess that if you search or not yeah okay all right let's just keep moving keep moving um yeah i might i may do maybe like two hour stops uh it's like 1 30 right now so yeah, maybe 30 more minutes. I think that's that should be good. Do you guys have any uh, lo-fi, copyright free jams you guys like listening to? Uh, cool, yeah, just let me know. Just keep adding stuff. What I'm gonna do now, it's uh, we're gonna probably, you know, like I, I could dynamash at this point, um, but I think I, I like to. I want to keep a, like a a better topology now, so I can start moving and creating like solid forms a little bit better. So I'm gonna duplicate this guy. I'm gonna hit zero mesh. Just gonna uh, wait a little bit, then subdivide this a couple times. You can see now that this is like much more, much cleaner. And we're gonna just come in here and project. And now we have very clean topology to work with um, and much easier to refine. And we can basically uh, start creating some some cool stuff. Yeah, interesting enough. Ooh, I don't know what happened to the hair. Oh, because I have symmetry on. Oh, so let me just uh, zero mesh without the symmetry. So just remember that uh, the model is not symmetrical anymore. So when I did the zero mesher, it created a symmetrical geometry which removed the hair for some reason instead of creating the hair on the other side you know uh, but anyways um, i'm gonna zero mesh this is not symmetrical anymore i'm gonna project the whole thing uh, and now we have a clean topology to work with uh, i'm gonna bring back the uh, bring back the symmetry and now we have super nice and clean topology it's almost like the clay got it got a little bit hotter so we can refine things a little bit more so what i like to do at this point is to really try to think that i'm finalizing this study this sketch right i'm gonna start with the eyes probably which is the most important thing at least for me and then i'm gonna go to maybe the nose or the, or the lips uh, refine a couple of these forms here and then add a little bit of like refinement here and there and then just call it a day uh, probably not gonna touch the hair too much. Uh, just do a quick render just to see how these things are feeling. Uh, and at this point, I'm gonna probably just kind of kill the symmetry as well. Let's just save this. So, yeah, let's start refining some of these forms. imagine that the, the eyes are coming from the inside um, and then we have this guy here and again 
again we don't need to rush Divide it one more time. Structure should go a little bit more to this side here. And that's just kind of indicate a little bit of the eyebrows here. Something like this. We have something to relate to. Same thing, we'll start with the eyebrow. So maybe we have something like this. Keep it very simple. One thing that I wanted to ask you guys is the where are you guys where did you guys see that I was live? Did someone tell you that? Did you guys saw on Facebook or Instagram? Uh, I'm just curious because things keep changing. So I posted on YouTube on Instagram and also on uh, uh, Facebook but just curious to see which one you guys saw oh, on YouTube oh damn that's sick I didn't know I guess so smash that like button you know <laughs> so yeah I guess if you guys like the video or just subscribe you you may be you may get notified every time I do one of these uh, so if you want to do so yeah that's cool uh, I do watch a lot of YouTube videos about like very, you know, like many different subjects. I love lots of stuff, but I, I never really got into the whole uh, YouTube thing as a creator. You know, not really, not too too much concern about keeping things perfect. And just 
just keeping it simple trying to establish really good forms uh, let's refine the nose a little bit and then this guy here nose on this side side can actually fill it a little bit more Of course, if I'm working on a production model, I'm not going to be sculpting the eyes like this, right? So I'll probably have the eyeball or a sphere or something. But a a as I said in the beginning, for those who you watched, uh, when I'm doing these studies, I, I try to keep things very simple and try to kind of challenge myself uh, in a way. Uh, to me, adding the sphere makes it much easier. Um, so, but on the other hand, if I know what I'm doing, it, sh it shouldn't be hard to not have this fear in there, if you really think about it. But even uh, even though it's it's harder, uh, I should be able. That's how I, I that's how I perceive it. I should be able to sculpt it. Uh, the sphere is just a just a basic sphere, right? So it, it makes things more challenging. Uh, I kind of like it. It also makes things a little bit more organic in, in a way. Another thing that I that I learned uh, th this year, or I should say, maybe not really learned, but uh, I started paying a little bit more attention is not to be very literal with everything. So we all know that there is a there is a form like this, and then everything connects. But as you know, skin is not very uh, even throughout the whole uh, body. You have like fat pads, you have like a lot of stuff going on. So you rarely you're going to see a form like this. You may see something like this, it gets a little bit deeper and deeper and deeper, right? Uh, when sculpting, we used to kind of smooth things out here and there. And when drawing, you try to not be very literal in a sense that you draw the full line. Uh, and when drawing you may draw things like this right and then your eye connects everything uh, so this is something that I always thought uh, when when sculpting just trying to, to, to understand why that happens in the sense that I said uh, there's a skin and there's fat pads and all of this stuff but uh, you know just not being literal it, it's another way of putting it uh, which makes things uh, interesting and it's, it's another way of like remembering to not uh, to not really overdo things too much all right okay it's, it's feeling better not bad. I think we need to refine the eyes a little bit more. Uh, yeah, 
so. Maybe let's just keep it simpler. I'll refine the iris a little bit later. Yeah, that's better. All right, so let's just kind of work on the lips a little bit. I'm going to isolate the lips again so we can. Forms a little bit better. So let's see. Let's make it kind of new here. Yes, I'm uh, <laughs> very concentrated, so I'm not talking too much. But yeah, next time I'll have some music. Uh, I'll be more prepared. And maybe I'll have someone to talk to while we do this so we can chat. Um, but you know, uh, yeah, 
things are coming together quite happy with how we are where we are at right now So what I'm what I'm seeing right now is that I still have some stylized shapes that I want to get rid of, and I, I I'll, some like small proportional changes, like for example that I'm doing right now, and I also have like some wobbliness in the surface that really bothers me. Uh, so. So let me try to now make start making start making very small adjustments so we can make this a little bit more natural um, so for example uh, the whole lips should be a little bit wider and I'll clean up some of these phone Also think that this is a little bit, yeah, too, too, too much. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I don't have the proper words to describe what I'm seeing, but yeah, maybe it should be a little bit lower here. Sometimes I would go down on the subdivisions just to uh, make the uh, cleaning up process a little bit easier. I definitely want to capture uh, the volume here, break it up. this plane a little bit uh, stronger this makes sense uh, the ears are still kind of bad um, the eyes are not very happy with but we have uh, maybe 10 minutes left so uh, let's start moving to finalize this so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna save this one more time uh, I'm gonna actually gonna duplicate this so we can we can have a copy um, and I'm gonna add a little bit more uh, movement to this head so let's just try doing something very simple uh, I'm gonna paint a mask here I don't have sim I'm not working with symmetry anymore as you guys already know so yeah something like this we have to fix a lot of stuff anyways um, let's move this down to the back of the maybe something like this yeah I don't want to make a huge pose I want to make something kind of simple so it still feels like neutral in a way but there's a little bit of more movement introduced um, so we can emphasize this is the, the sternocleidal mask card here uh, 
this one's getting stretched uh, and this one's kind of more relaxed and then sternocleidomastoid attached to the sternum um, and we have the clavicles here which we can you know define a little bit better and then this is the hair so something simple I'm not going to spend too much time but I still want to have the clavicles in there as we talked in the beginning so since I'm kind of making some of these things up all of the anatomy studies they, they come into play so the sternocleido sternocleidomastoid it actually has two heads one attached to the sternum the other one attached to the clavicle here so you can start using the knowledge that you have to uh, make some of these things happen uh, not gonna bother too much about about it right now I just want to add a little bit more movement so it feels like a little bit more natural. Um, something like this. Yeah, I saw someone was asking if this is gonna be if gonna gonna keep this recording. Yeah, I'm probably gonna uh, probably gonna save it, uh, and I guess that goes to my YouTube channel automatically. Th that would be the hope, because um, I haven't. I, I'm not. De I'm definitely not recording it myself, but I, I believe YouTube does it uh, by default, right? And then I sh I should be able to just say something like, "Hey, it's just." just stay there or something or just go directly to my channel uh, yeah I, I, I believe I believe that's what happens but but if, if I had to press something specifically yeah I'm sorry I, I did definitely did not press um, okay so now it's time to Oh, that's good to know. Thanks, my name.
guess we can work on these ears a little bit. Yeah, maybe this one I'm gonna add a little bit of hair. Start one of these shapes here. And one thing that traditional sculpting helped me understand is the actual concept of textures. Uh, and textures, I mean like different different surfaces, they do have different textures, right? So you can play with it. So for example, the hair, I can leave the hair very uh, uneven and sketchy and blocky and rough. And then in contrast, I have very, uh, very smooth skin with very little bumps and stuff like that. And then the contrast actually makes the hairs uh, and the skin also stand out. Uh, they're, they're I'm gonna probably record a video about the contrasts and the balance between things. This is also very important, but, um, but yeah, same thing. So. here start breaking up a little bit more refining things things that uh that i pushed a little bit too far in the beginning you know like kind of filling up those cavities um trying to keep things a little bit more natural less defined less pronounced find a balance between all of these things and we are at the two hours mark i'm gonna probably spend just a few more minutes so if you guys have any less questions uh please feel free to to drop those in in the comments and i will do another round of uh, q a just before we wrap these up but this this is this was great uh this is actually was much better than I anticipated and thank you guys for helping me out helping me setting things up uh, I will most likely do more often of these and <laughs> probably uh, s schedule something or tell you guys in advance because you know this was very impromptu uh, I was going to sketch something like hey maybe I should just stream on Instagram uh, and then I remember last time I did someone told me hey you should just do this on YouTube and I have a lot of people doing YouTube videos now too so like hey I might as well just give it a try so yeah i'll keep you guys posted so at this at this point i reduced my damn standard to a very uh, low 
intensity and we're going to use it to kind of as if i was drawing this is like my darkest dark i'm going to just use to uh, accentuate a couple forms so we can actually emphasize um, things here and there and really play with the contrast of some of these forms see something around here we could probably just move, move this in a little bit here as well also use this on a very big size to just kind of make big statements statements so um, this guy some final adjustments what I usually like to do at this phase is also change the materials uh, so changing the material will help me to see like mistakes and, and issues because you know uh, some some people flip the image see things upside down uh, this is just another way of, of checking things and I go to my uh, delicious pink <laughs> material post stuff and we can also change the light right so we can actually move the light and make sure things are reading very well so we can do some quick renders and just increase the angle uh, increase the rays Yeah, not bad. This is one. Uh, this is another another material that I like using a lot.
doing more adjustments. Really trying to make this a little bit more organic. Yeah, it, it's all on the proportions. So it, it's very easy to just kind of lose track. So you see the ref is low. This guy has like a very big chin or something then you 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 tend to totally overdo it in the beginning which is fine uh, but that's when you you need to kind of step back and uh, yeah, try to really hone in on some of these forms and then adjusting Of course, if this was a professional work or something, I would probably pause right now, take a break, and uh, definitely come back to it with with like fresher eyes. Um, but of course, I'm not doing that. Maybe I'll come back to it a different day. But I don't want to leave you guys hanging. And, and again, this is just a simple study, another one in the books. And, and the more we do these, the, the better we get. That, that's the whole purpose of study. So I'll definitely encourage you guys to do uh, studies like this. Not really trying to capture, you know, like the full likeness. I'm going to do this like... This is something that you can do in two hours. Well, I, I spent two hours, so uh, maybe you're gonna get better results than me. Maybe you're gonna get worse results, but th that's not the whole the, the point. The point is just to study. And the more we study, the better we get. Um, and sometimes it's good to have to do long studies. Sometimes it's good to do quick studies. Um, and you you get different different things out of those different studies. Just do things with purpose and you guys will achieve whatever you want, I'm pretty sure. All right, so I think I'm gonna call it. Uh, maybe it's very hard for me to stop working because <laughs> I keep seeing things, uh, you know, that need improvement.
to go back to this basic material. And hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Uh, let me know in the comment if you guys liked it. I'm gonna stop in just a little bit to, to read some of like maybe some last minute questions if you guys have some and and call it. I'm just going to finalize my thinking process here. Uh, and if you guys like it, you know, let me know because uh, I'll probably do more of these in the future with a louder microphone. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on with the microphone, so I don't know. I'll figure it out. Probably some something on my end. Yes, I guess that's it. Thanks, thanks everybody for joining, and let's let's check out the. What's up, CMAC? You know, like just match that like button. So, hey guys, if you guys don't know CMAC, a uh, good friend of mine, he's been doing some really amazing interviews here on YouTube. Uh, go check, check his channel out. Uh, pretty good interviews. Um, definitely recommend. So, you know, if you like CMX content, smash that like button, <laughs> subscribe, and give him a thumbs, thumbs up and all of the good stuff. All right, so, uh, so let's see. Hey, Robin, thanks, man. Thanks for joining us. Uh, that was pretty fun. Yeah, I definitely want to see you, you sculpting. Robin, it's an uh, amazing concept artist, if you guys don't know him. Uh, again, check his out. Mas, para a galera aí do Brasil, eu faço uma próxima em português. Um, so basically, I'm saying that in, in, uh, I, might, I, I may do a next one uh, just like f fully in Portuguese. So I have a, I'm originally from Brazil, so I have a lot of like Brazilian uh, people watching and following me. So uh, yeah, but m most of the stuff I'll, I'll stick to the English because it's like a universal language, as you guys know. Uh, yeah, I think the live will will be on YouTube automatically. If not, I'll try to figure it out how to do it. Yeah, so you should be able to view this later. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, uh, if I didn't have to do anything. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you guys dig it. So. All right. Hey, Abraão, Abraão, again, another friend of mine, amazing character artist. If you guys don't know him, go check his out. I'm, I'm like super, ha super happy to see like all of you guys here. So Abraão have, ha has a really good question. Uh, do you have any tips for people that get, that sometimes gets motivated to do personal work? Um, so yeah, I, I do get burned out as well, right? And sometimes I don't feel like doing uh, any personal work. Um, so so to me, it all comes down to uh, a couple a couple, couple different things. So I look at my own work and I, and I realize that I still have a lot to improve, a lot of areas that I want to improve, right? Like, uh, for example, this year, as I said before, I wanted to devote to painting and drawing because it's something that I always wanted to do and never really had the time or the courage uh, that's actually better to to do so because i was so focused on sculpting so i was like you know what i'm just gonna draw and, and paint so that was very motivating because uh that's something that i always wanted to learn and you know as when you're learning something uh quote new you kind of Every, it's, it's super exciting, right? So you have like new videos and like new content, like books and, and all of that. But um, but other than that, what I try to do is always remember why I started doing all of this. I, I try to remember when it was in back in maybe like, you know, like 15 years ago when I had no clue of what I was doing. Um, 
when it felt like magical so i tried to to remember that feeling and i tried to remember how i used to feel uh, being inspired by amazing artists and amazing people like dreaming a lot about the future and everything that i wanted to achieve so every time i remember those those feelings uh, i get pretty pumped to just you know like sit on the computer or get some clay and just work um yeah, I think that does it for me, but I guess we are all different. So, um, yeah, hope that helps, buddy. Yeah, good to see you here, brother. Danilo, damn, dude. Wow, like the whole crew is here. Danilo Ataiji, uh, well, another friend of mine. Super happy to see you here, brother. So if you guys don't know Danilo, um, amazing artist you guys should check out his work uh danilo it's just amazing uh just so you guys know he worked on the last of us part two and some other naughty dog projects so uh check out his work amazing character artist so you know bro maybe like just looking at our friends and kind of uh you know uh th that's what i was saying like reminding us how it used to be back in the day like all of the the forums and you know like we were starting out and feeling like you know like this is everything's new it's crazy and exciting and we should do these these and that and we're gonna dream we're gonna work on those companies and all of that so yeah um yeah uh good to see you guys i guess i'm gonna call it a night uh thanks everybody who joined me who joined us today um i hopefully this I hope this was very entertaining and helpful in some ways. Uh, I'm going to do some cool renders of this guy in, in the post on the social media. And hopefully this, this live will be up soon so you guys can view it later. Um, and the next one, I, I promise, I'll be more a little bit more organized and um, uh, not, not as impromptu as this was one. This was this one was so. Yeah, have a good night, everybody. Take it easy. Um, and have a good beginning of a new week tomorrow. Take it easy, guys. Bye-bye.